So guys, he's going to try out the motorcycle. So what do you do first? You put on the ignition key. Yeah. Uh, because this is an electric motorcycle, uh, it only has the throttle. Yeah. So as long as you put on the key, you're ready to ride. Awesome. So we're just pressing down the throttle and going. Okay, good. So yeah. now we go. Uh, And off he went. Electric motorcycles are becoming very common on the streets of Nairobi, Kenya nowadays. Well, I believe the introduction of these vehicles is in the right direction since it's affordable to maintain and the fact that it's electric and does not emit any toxic gases into the atmosphere. These white lines are the, are the bus. But then, there is a common question asked by anyone who comes into contact with these electric motorcycles. The use of motorcycles is popular in Kenya since they are used mainly as taxis and for delivery services. Many rely on this for daily commutes and others. Now, the common question asked by many is, does the motorcycles have enough range or battery life to run their daily operations? I would have asked the same question if I knew nothing about electric vehicles. I decided to visit Akrai to tell us more about how these taxi motorcycles can be efficient in their daily activities without pausing to charge them during the day since charging to get a full battery could take about 5 to 6 hours. So guys, I just saw this equipment over here and I'm wondering the use of this equipment. Yeah, so what we have here is a swapping cabinet. It's what our riders use to swap out their batteries when they're depleted. Um, the way it works is it's just connected to the, a single phase of the main supply so we mm. can deploy these cabinets in many locations and uh, the way it works is the riders will have an app so they can locate the swap stations through the app wow. and when their battery is depleted they can navigate to the swap station and perform a swap using the app. So can you show us how it works? Yeah, so we have an accurate app here. Um, the way it works is riders will sign up, mm -hmm. um, they give their KYC documents sign up on the app yeah. and then they can load their wallet through mobile money. Through what? Mobile through money? Through mobile money, wow. yeah, M Pesa. M Pesa. Yeah, yeah, they can load their wallet through mobile money and um, pay for our services. So, the first step they'll do, um, first of all, once they lease a battery, they can monitor its status, they can see its state of charge. So, when it's depleted, they know that it's time to swap. Yeah. Then they would come to this section, they can navigate mm -hmm. on the map and locate a nearby swap station. Yeah. And uh, when they get there, so for example, this is a battery leased to me. Um, yeah. I'll demonstrate a swap. Mm. Um, so all I need to do is scan the QR code of the cabinet. Yeah. Wow, this is beautiful. Yeah. Just a minute. I'll just... Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So the first step is it opens an yeah. empty locker for me to put my depleted battery. Okay. opens an empty locker you put in your depleted battery okay so there is a depleted battery yes and what happens next so the cabinet has run some checks make sure they make sure everything checks out then it opens a door with a fully charged battery. so it opens automatically after automatically. putting this in yes wow you can see the station is automatic it's not manned yeah. the rider can do the swap mm. on their own mm. and now you put a battery back in the motorcycle yes and continue your journey Wow, so I think that is very good for the border border people who are always on the go. At any point, you can just get or go to the swapping station mm -hmm. within five minutes mm -hmm. or less than five minutes. Two minutes. Two you can minutes. Do a swap in two minutes. You make a swap and then yeah. you go. Continue your journey. That is awesome. Yes, and it's automatic, not a man station. You can do everything on your own. Everything is done through the app. Mm -hmm. Load your own wallet to the Pesa, um, and it's efficient and a smooth system. Awesome. You guys are really doing a very good job here yes. in this. And then there is a game changer, I mean, with this swap. Yes. Because you know, many people talk about um, the charging infrastructure. This is one of the things that is hindering the patronization of electric mobility because they think of how do I charge it? You get it. Yes. So if you guys have a solution like this, and I yes. think now it's going to accelerate yes. um, the shift to this e-mobility. Yes. Good exactly. job, guys. Yes. There are many bus solutions where bus means battery as a service coming up in Kenya. 
No competitor over here Are you a fan of the BQ space? Drop a file lead in the race I will be sharing all these new solutions with you in my upcoming episodes. So kindly subscribe if you believe in this channel. Thank you. Yeah. Hi guys, as you wait for my return, kindly help me grow this channel by subscribing to it and hitting the notification button. By so doing, I will be able to bring you more of these educative videos. Thank you. That is your automobile expert Dave Gill, and you are watching Driver Fight TV. I'm still here in Kenya. I've been making videos around e mobility, and I'm actually quite surprised how Kenyans are adopting this e mobility. The last time I was at Room Electric, and today I'm at Kiwi EV Limited. This should tell you how Kenyans are ready for this industry or this shift. Now, there are a lot of companies springing up here in Kenya creating healthy competition to make this shift possible. Let's go in. Hi guys, today I'm with this fine gentleman and he is going to introduce himself. Hi guys, how you doing? Thanks David for having me. Uh, my name is Chris Mara, I'm the founder of Kiri EV and we're a clean mobility company based in Nairobi, Kenya. We assemble two and three wheelers um, for the Kenyan market and also looking to expand beyond the Kenyan market. We also do charging and battery swapping infrastructure to make it easier for our clients to get around. Okay, fantastic. Um, so, Christopher, how did the Kiwi EV Limited start? Um, so, for me, I've, I've always been interested in the new energy space. So, I used to work in it um, previously, um, doing Pico Hydro as well as um, solar installations and backup systems. And then the EV sector was, you know, still coming up at that point. And, you know, I thought, you know, this is the next big thing because, you know, it, it encompasses clean energy as well as transport, which, you know, affects us on an everyday basis. Um, so this culminated, you know, one day I went to an exhibition. I was in Nairobi and I met some guys from India who had brought in bikes and I was just fascinated by it. Um, so we ended up, actually ended up going to India about a month later to visit their factory. In the middle of monsoon season, so it was crazy, everyone was flooded, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, so what we were doing, um, then we brought some samples back here. Uh, so a couple of scooters, uh, we tested them out, but you know, scooters are not a big thing here in 